Welcome to the R video tutorial on One Way Innova in R part four. This is part of a series on how to do One Way Innova in R. This one is gonna focus on assumption testing. So let's go down here and add this to this. Assumptions is what we're gonna test. Okay, we're using the Cycler CPK, uh, CSV data set, which is in the description below. There's a link to the repository where you can go grab it. And let's see, this is part four. So if you haven't watched parts one, two, and three, you might wanna jump back and do that. We're gonna read in the data. We're gonna make a box plot here real quick. And then we're gonna run the uh, ANOVA on this. It's a one-way ANOVA. Here's the ANOVA table. We found there are differences. We've looked at multiple comparison procedures such as Tukey's test, Fisher's LSD, and so on. Now what we wanna do is look at some of the assumptions. So one of the first assumptions that we're very or typically interested in is uh, Levine's test for constant variance. Okay, and then in order to do this, you're gonna need a library here uh, that you probably already have loaded on your machine, but if you don't, you can load it on your machine by looking at a previous video on how to install those. So what we're interested in here is this library called car. We're gonna load this up, it does take a second to load. And inside of car, we're gonna use what's called Levine's uh, test. Now, there's two of them on here if you look at the tool tip. There's a one with a dot and then there's one with a capital T. We're gonna use the one with the capital T. Actually, the one with the lowercase t has been uh, deprecated or it's no longer being used or updated. So we're looking for here Levine's test with a capital T. And we can simply put in here our ANOVA that we've already ran. So, uh, and it will work it out from there. So we have Levine's test, we just plug this in and we run it. It says Levine's test for homogeneity of variance. Uh, the center is equal to the median. It gives you like an ANOVA type output because it really is an ANOVA type idea. And you see the p-value here is 0 0.6405. Well, our null hypothesis here is that we do have constant variance across the groups. So based off of this, we would not reject that idea. So we don't have to worry about non-constant variance in this case. Now, the other thing that we might be interested in is looking at the normality of the residuals. So, because that is one of the assumptions is that the residuals are normal and that they have zero mean and constant variance. Well, we look for constant variance. We know they have zero mean. You can just run an average across the residuals if you don't believe me. So the normality of the residuals, we can just use QQ norm. We've actually done this before. And we just put in here cycler one dot AOV, but we're interested in the residuals. So we're gonna go down here and we're gonna grab the residuals and pop this in here. Now, when we run this, we're going to get our QQ plot. And if you look at this, you go, oh my gosh, that's possibly the worst QQ plot I've ever seen. Because if you remember, a QQ plot should be a straight line across here along a 45 degree angle. And if you look at this, this is no way that this thing is normally distributed. Uh, based off of a QQ plot, this is not a test. This is just looking at it visually to assess whether it's normal. If we wanted to do this, we could do Shapiro Wilkes test. Uh, the Shapiro test, and then we could put in here cycler one dot AOV dollar sign residuals. And we've already done a video on this, so you should be familiar with this. And if you look here, the p-value is incredibly small, which would say that the, they aren't really normally distributed at all, okay? Now, I will make some other comments here that you should kind of pay attention to. Notice there's this huge gap here. What is going on here that there is a gap? So what we might want to do is just do something really, really simple and try to take this a little bit farther and look at a histogram uh, of the residuals here because maybe we can get some insights onto what's actually going on at in our residuals. So here, hist, cycler1.aov, dollar sign residuals, and just run this real quick. And what do I see? I see here, that I have two groups. There are two groupings here. Now, what might these groups be? Well, all I have to do is really possibly just look a little bit farther and look at our data. Let's look at our data real quick. We have gender here, males and females, okay? So we have males and females. Maybe that is creating these two separate groups. 
And we could test it by doing a multiple way ANOVA. But my point is, is that there is a re possible reason for this not being normal. Now, is normality really a problem? Depends. If you've done random assignment to treatment group, normality is not a problem, okay? You need to keep this in mind. If you've done random assignment to treatment group, which in this case, they did do that uh, because each one of these athletes was brought in and assigned a treatment group. They were randomly assigned to that treatment group. And if you've done random assignments to treatment group, then the randomization test is equivalent to the F test, which would mean that there are differences here because we don't need the normality assumption for this. You can go look it up uh, in some textbooks. I think Kempthorne uh, is a common design book that talks about the randomization test and why it's equivalent to the F test that we've done for Fisher's F test. All right, so we've looked at the assumptions. We've found that normality is not a case here, not would be accepted here. There is constant variance. Uh, and the, if the trials were independently done in the lab, we shouldn't have any worries about independence. All right, so now we can move on to the next video.